What's up? I'm Ross Bolin. We're back at Grand X Media Headquarters in Austin, Texas for another episode of Backdoor Cover, where every week we talk about sports, all sports. Sports. All of the sports. We're including all sports now. And betting and gambling and and uh, sex. And sex. And I'm, I'm here with Dylan. Hey, Billy. Billy. Re- 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 What's up, Billy? And Dan, Register. Hey, what's going on? Back from the dead. Hey, Billy. Again. Yeah. Very much. I'm coming off. We got all kinds of cool shit to talk about this week. All kinds but of cool shit. All kinds. We're covering all the sports. We're co- we're covering so many different sports topics. Like, there's not a sport out there we won't talk about today. I think we're getting into cricket, right? Yeah. 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 Specifically today, later, very, a, very, a pretty big cricket story. But before we do that, check out Man Outfitters at manoutfitters.com. They've got great looking game day apparel. Including Yeti, Patagonia, Travis Matthew, Mizzen and Maine, Cole Hahn, and Costa. Manoutfitters.com will make sure you look great on game day. Uh, it's getting colder outside. Would you agree? The, With lo- the low on Sunday is like 27 I here think, in Austin. I, I think they're mentioning a uh, polar vortex coming our way. So, so with a polar a vortex, thing, thing typically on the, uh, weather channel. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cold. It means cold is what I think. And but I'm no weatherman. And we're but, in Texas. I mean, if you're up in like you know. Michigan. North Dakota, yeah. they're probably in, in. They're freezing. You're not leaving your house, so you got to go to manoutfitters.com and buy yourself some warm gear. I'm wearing something right now, actually. Man yeah. Outfitters Henley. But you're always wearing a Man Outfitters Henley. That was the first time I actually got. I got this. Henley. Oh, you this usually is the have new Henley. Okay, yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are actually man. How do you like it? So far? They're nice. Yeah, they're a little heavier, which is good though for the winter. No wonder yes. it looks so hot today. Yeah, yeah. It's not not this. Definitely not. It's not what I'm not what I'm working with uh, with my face, but no. uh, so on Man Outfitters right now we've got free express two day shipping on what? orders of two hundred dollars or more, that's which a, is like that's two, a questionable decision. I mean, spending part. yeah, we're just giving away money, but yeah. spending two hundred dollars is pretty freaking easy, man. That's like like there's pairs of jeans that are more than two hundred dollars. That's one item. If you can't spend two hundred dollars, I question you. <laughs> well, you can still shop with us though. But yeah, you can come spend <laughs> less than two hundred dollars if you want to. Um, just to be clear on that though, you have to select the two-day shipping option during the checkout process of your uh, order of over two hundred dollars to get that free express two-day shipping. But you can also use the pro the promo code Game Day. One word. One word. Game Day for ten percent off your entire order on ManOutfitters dot com. So hit ManOutfitters dot com. Check out all the cool stuff they've got. We've got. We are we we are them. They are us. True. Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Yep. All right, let's talk about sports. Sports. The first thing on our list is Wake Forest. Why is that the first thing on our list? You you don't know what happened with Wake Forest? No, dear, you're going to tell us, though. Okay. I'll tell you. Well, Dan, if you want, yeah, go ahead. No, Dan. let Dan tell us. Oh, well, I'll get, I guess I'll get into it. I've heard a little bit about it. Uh, you guys are clearly in the biz. so. Yeah, no, I mean, well, I'm, uh, I know. Dylan, did I you know. write about this? Yeah, I, I wrote about it. I'll, I'll go ahead and break it down. You, you, I know everything about it. I just want you to be the one. I to wrote talk about it on uh, t- on TFM totalfratmove dot com. Okay, little known site. www dot Inter- before that known um, internet website. So this guy Tommy Elrod, who I believe is a former coach of Wake Forest, and was up until a few days ago, um, like the a radio personality. He was Tommy Elrod. He's yeah. been through the Wake he was Forest like, program he was like for a University long of Texas time. Craig Way. I'm, okay, a lot of you guys don't know who that is. But anyway. He was like the the voice of Wake Forest football, and what important this guy, role? Yeah, what the, and because he he of his role, he had such close access to practices and basically the inner workings of the football program. And what he did was he was uh, selling or trying to give away game inf- like vital <laughs> game information to opponents. He's selling like audibles. And yeah, he was like different calls. You're like total espionage type shit. That's incredible. Uh, like a, a Wake Forest now, lifer giving was he, away was secrets. He, was he doing this because he has like a degener- degenerate gambling issue that he was trying to fund? I don't or was know. he just that big of a scumbag that he just was trying to make some cash on the side? The reason the investigation was launched, someone found some documents inside the opposing Louisville. Yeah, Louisville, the opposing. It was Petrino. Room. Uh, Petrino, so he sold these secrets. Petrino bought yeah, these secrets. But Petrino got his hands because on of these course. secrets. And so that the, someone from Wake Forest staff found these and said, hey, what, why are these in the, in the visiting locker room? And that launched an investigation. And they apparently they found okay. a bunch of emails for, for and text messages from 
this I guy think, Tommy Elrod, who is just a complete dick bag. I think even Army bought these secrets. That's pretty incredible. But first of all, props to that guy for trying to make some money on the side. Everybody got to get theirs. Never knock another man's hustle. <laughs> Go get yours. Se- second, <laughs> he has to. If be you're in going to buy secrets off the other team. Maybe don't leave them behind in the locker room when you fucking pack up to leave. That's classic Petrino. Just, oh, uh, what's this? What are these papers? Oh, fuck these papers. Of course it's Petrino, too. Of course. He, he, never, cover, he never covers his tracks. He doesn't care. No. God. He does it right in your face. Sloppy. Tommy Elrod, just out there selling secrets. I'm pretty sure that's his name. It sounds right. But Tommy Elrod. Yeah, whatever. You have to that's think what we're calling he's in him. some type of debt, right? I, he owes or, some bad people money. What ki- What kind of payday can you get for selling i bet a lot for wake forest yeah, his name's tommy elrod it's not like they're a national power like the, i get it it's like if it was alabama football like yeah i would totally I, buy those i'm secrets. glad you said that dan this the centric theme of my article when i wrote about it, i said thankfully this was just wake forest not a whole lot of people are passionate about wake forest football there are some of course but if this guy did it for uh, alabama he would have been dragged to tuscaloosa from the bumper of an f-250 like he would have been Publicly, yes. yeah, he would be. He would have been murdered. He would be. He would be yeah. murdered in public. What's What's crazy to think about is like, yeah, it's Wake Forest. Nobody gives a shit about Wake Forest football, but there's a lot of people out there betting on games they don't care about, right? Like, the, I'm, I I've probably bet on a Wake Forest game at some point. I don't remember, but I'm just gonna assume that I have based on you know my level of degeneracy. And this fucker Tommy Elrod could have cost me money. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's plenty of people with grabs with this guy. Tommy has, is in some shit. He has enemies across no, the country. Tommy, like, mainly Tommy's Vegas. fucked. Because if I had 10 grand on a Wake Forest game two years ago, I'm now going to assume that Elrod owes me 10 grand, and this, I'm coming for that money. This guy is unhirable for the rest of his life. Think about that. In you any can't role. trust this guy with anything. You can't hire him at Subway because he will sell your yeah. secrets <laughs> to other sandwich places. You, you, he can't be a cashier at the grocery store. He will pocket you know, Cha- a $5 yeah. bill here and there. He's stealing change from old women. The guy's just total scum. He's older, though, right? Cannot be trusted. He's, no, he's like 41. Mid-40s. Mid-40s. 41. 41. He's married. He's got He's got four kids. What are his fucking kids supposed to think? The, his kids, they, they need to change their last name. Tommy, you need to look yourself in the mirror and ask, what is Byron, Thomas, and Ann supposed to think of their daddy now that they know he's scum? Get it together, Tommy. Look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> He probably needs to go into protective witness program. That's what I'm yeah, saying. He to change his name. That's what I'm saying. That's, he's done. He needs facial reconstruction. He needs uh, the whole witness protection. He's, yeah. He needs a new family in the burbs. I was watching... Uh, because there are some angry sharks. Yeah. What is that? Uh, I was watching Minority Report, that, that Tom Cruise movie the other day, which is actually pretty solid. It's also stupid, but it's, it's pretty solidly entertaining. There's a part where he has to change his face so that no one will recognize him. <laughs> And it's just so bad. Like, the t- I don't know when that movie was made, like 2002 or something, but, like, they didn't have enough technology to make his face change thing really go well. It just looks like a candle melting. Anyway, let's talk about Floyd uh, Mayweather and Conor McGregor. I'm interested to hear, Dan, what you have to say about this situation because I feel like it. It this is something that falls into your lifestyle Yeah. as a douchebag. Okay. And so <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear what you have to That's say. Tough, I have. Tough I have. Affair. I have. I have a lot of opinions about this too. But I just want to. I want to hear yours first. Okay. So what is the, like? What's the situation? So is, are they actually going to fight? Or is no, this no, no, no. More. Even if they bullshit? do, all right, they will not fight. So, they, they, what they're doing right now is just taking shots at each other back and forth in the media, and basically, big media, evil big media like ESPN, is using us the general public, like pawns, and treating us like idiots. It, it's disgusting because not only do I not give a shit if Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor ever fight, I do not care. I'm having to be bombarded with quotes, these stupid little pretend quotes, like Mayweather called him uh, Conor McTapout. Like, oh, good one, Mayweather. That shit's all over my news feed now. Did that- you, see, you see what Mayweather did today, or maybe it was, it was late yesterday, about the... Uh- the uh, caption contest? No. He posted a picture of Conor McGregor like on his back on the canvas. Caption contest. Winner gets 10K. See, this is this is all a big publicity stunt. Right. And it's because we're all dumb enough to talk about it. 
But yeah. what's the publicity? They're never going to fight. Well, is McGregor it, isn't is a Mayweather, boxer. Is Mayweather ever going to fight again? I don't think so, right? The, the amount is. of money it would take for these two guys to fight each other oh, it's a video. is absolutely insane. And even if they find a way to pull it off, even if they find a way to get him in the ring, it's not going to be entertaining. You're talking mm. about a mixed martial artist. Right, but he's a... Boxing one of the most tactical, boring boxers to watch in the history of sport. But McGregor is a really, really, really good striker. It but Mayweather matter. has he never lost. Touch, he will not touch Mayweather's face. No, ever. He will never get a single shot off on him. If he has to go by boxing rules, he will not touch the man's Mayweather face. Mayweather would destroy him in the boxing. But game. he's he's also very he's very unorthodox, very wiry. I, I I'm not gonna we're not I'm not saying this is gonna be a fight or if they did fight that it would go come, come close to being competitive. But what I am saying is, I did see Nate Diaz got his boxing license, oh and I'm God. thinking Diaz, it's going to be Diaz McGregor three, but boxing. See, why don't we just do Diaz McGregor three, but with instead of being boxing and having a boxing license, they're allowed to tackle and kick and choke each other because that's way more fun. Oh wait, that exists. It's called the UFC. And they but don't twice. need this shit, man. But guess what? Uh, you know how much money they can make in a bo- uh, boxing and. Negotiating their own prices yeah, instead but, of having to work uh, with the UFC? It's, it's just, not going to happen. But I'm just saying, I feel like we're being had here with the amount it's be, that story's being pushed onto us. Like, oh my God, McGregor, McGregor registered for his boxing license. Oh my God, did you hear what Floyd and Connor said to each other today? Every day? Every day? How long is this going to go on? I'm well, just I mean, how long it. did the Pacquiao thing go on? It was like a decade, right? But at least those are two boxers. <laughs> this is these are t- it's like being like 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 we're talking about you know two guys in different sports. But if we're being honest, could a McGregor uh, Floyd Mayweather fight be worse than the Mayweather Pacquiao fight? That was awful. You yes, remember that? it could be worse. No, no, I don't think so. Have every Mayweather fight is worse than the Mayweather fight that came before it. <laughs> He's getting but older. It's, it's like if every day we talked about like oh shit, LeBron could go play in the NFL. Like oh, LeBron bought a football at Academy today. <laughs> is he going to play in the NFL? <laughs> I'm just sick of it, man, and it's it's in every medium. It's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on my fucking Instagram feed. All these sports Instagram accounts I follow, they all put up pictures of these dudes when anything happens. It just it just pisses me because off. Because it gets clicks. I'm heated, man. We're in the click biz. You know how it works. Yeah, but there there's a there's a le- there's there's a line and it's been crossed. And it needs to be uncrossed. I I just hate both those dudes so much right now. I've been oversaturated with you can't hate Connor. I love Connor, but this is clearly a publicity thing. Yeah, th- I mean, he's like, I just want to go back to seeing him choke people. I just want to hear him on the mic. Or on the mic, yeah. He's hilarious. He's yeah. really Floyd good. is just... All right, here's, here's a better question. Close. Floyd Since is... Since this is never going to happen, but theoretically, who is the... Or, I mean, not theoretically, but like, all time, who's better on the mic? Muhammad Ali or Connor McGregor? That's tough because... Ali couldn't get away with saying a lot of what McGregor's allowed to say. Ali had to had to keep cuss words out of his shit. Ali was poetic. Yeah. That's true. And McGregor just gets up there and start First of all, McGregor has that incredible accent that makes everything so much cooler. But he just gets up there and drops a bunch of F-bombs, tells everybody to go fuck themselves. From an entertainment standpoint, I would say McGregor. But like, yeah. more legendary, it's Muhammad Ali. I mean, Ali did a lot for like civil rights, too. So, like... Yeah, that plays <laughs> yeah, into that, it. That was part of it too. <laughs> not a big war guy, Muhammad Ali. No, no, not a big fan of Vietnam. No, kind of robbed him of his prime. It, yeah. Having to go to jail yeah. for three days. The movie Ali is a good movie. Have you seen it? Have either of y'all is that seen the it? Will Smith. One? It's Will Smith. No, I haven't I seen it, but dude. I mean, it's really good. Will Smith's not bad in anything, really. No, no. Well, uh, Suicide Squad is one of the worst movies ever made. But he but was still good. Sure. Him and Margot Robbie were But fantastic. Ali is a great movie. I highly recommend it to anybody who uh, enjoys movies. It's not even... It's like a sports movie, but it's not a sports movie. It's really good. It's you, American cinema, though. I don't know if Michael would appreciate that. Jumping from, jumping from Floyd Mayweather, who's like, you know, close to being legally retarded, to another athlete who's close to being legally retarded, Jameis Winston. Oh. Uh, we're, we're going there? Is playing the... We are. The, I mean, the, Jameis... Did you ever see the Gruden camp with Jameis Winston? No, but where it, he broke it down. I think Gruden called Jameis. He had he said he had the same IQ as Peyton on the football field. That's the dumbest thing I've ever. 
Well, maybe. He might. I don't know. No, I don't know what's going on inside of his head, but he's the worst speaker. Yeah, the ever. worst. Yeah. He sounds so stupid. I was just he he gave like a pump up speech before their last game and they recorded the whole thing. It's like I I don't even I don't know what the message was. He gave a pump up speech during halftime of oh, yeah. Florida State was playing. The do- the dogs, we some dogs. It was the most uncomfortable 45 this seconds. Florida State Ole Miss. Oh, we not see was so uncomfortable. We some dogs. We're not some puppies. We some dogs. It worked though, like, right? Okay. They beat Ole Miss. Can you get out yeah. of the locker room, please? I mean, he just is—he's just not a—he's just not a smart man. That you got to give him some credit for as dumb as he is. He's doing pretty well in the NFL. No, he's—he's he's good. He's a good quarterback. So they've got the Cowboys this week. Cowboys obviously took their second Giants L of the year. They're what? What, what are they saying? Ten and Giants. Eleven, 11, 11 and Giants. Giants. Uh. Do they bounce back against the Buccaneers? And by bounce back, you're do asking they win? do they cover? No, I'm not even asking if they cover. I'm asking if you think they win. Yes, they win. Okay. I'm on Bucks plus seven because that's a touchdown. Uh, okay, that's a, that's fair. Yeah. And I think the Cowboys. Cowboys here's haven't the, blown many teams out this year. No, they have, but they but they've been getting the job done, obviously. And here here's the thing. After all that's happened and unfolded over the past. You know, a few months, whatever, with Dak and Zeke and them being rookies and having so much success. I think this is the first week that they will have that sense of like, oh, shit, like we need to get this. We need to get this win, like a little bit more pressure because the Cowboys fan base and what being a part of that franchise, the amount of media attention you take does put something extra on. Whether you want to admit it or not, like they they interviewed Dak yesterday and he was like, I've been dealing with this type of pressure since the second I signed with this team. It's the Dallas Cowboys. But that's I don't believe that shit. Like game to game, the pressure changes. Also, I think Tampa Bay is the hottest team in football well, right now, right? They won six their, straight. Their defense looks good, good man. Defense is good. It's legit. But the Cowboys, another way to look at that, Bill, is they have already exceeded expectations by a mile for the season. They have a rookie quarterback. No, right. one, they weren't expected to be that good this year, so that's another way of looking at. It. They've already, yeah, not but that they've achieved their goals that they've set up. They've already exceeded expectations. But as competitors, there's no way they're looking at it like that. Like, hey, we've done a really good job, regardless of how it goes down this week. There's no way most fans are looking at it like From that. From a pressure either. standpoint, though, I'm saying it might relieve some of that. Maybe, maybe, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch this game uh, because I think it'll be. Very close. I think I think it'll be within three points. I don't know who's stopping Mike Evans. It's a Sunday night game, right? Nobody can guard Mike Evans. No. It's a Sunday night game. Yeah, it's a Sunday night game. Yeah, you know, Bucks. Bucks definitely cover. They they might win outright. Dallas. If I, I, if, I, I need Dallas to lose, so I'll we take can, Dallas just because I'm I'm a Dallas. Homer. I need Dallas Freedom to boys. lose so I can get we can get the uh, the Tony Romo talk to keep brewing. God, it's I like so that. bad. I love it's that. It's so bad. It's like, but we, it really all falls on Jameis. It's like, is he going to go out there and and Throw a bunch of picks like a dipshit, or is he? If because he have, if is he have a, if he has a good game, they have a very good chance of winning. You need to stop trashing Jameis. He's just a, he's just stupid. Have like, some respect. He, he's, he's also insuff- he's an insufferable. He's also my fantasy quarterback no, I love this Jameis. week. But anyway, I like the whole crab leg story. Y- you ever? Uh, oh, he just settled his sexual assault. Uh, oh, good for him. Case from Florida State, out of court. I think he, whatever that there's like, a lot money. there's a he lot no, there, there's a lot to that that we're not going to get into. We don't have to. I'm just saying he settled. But do you ever hear the story that he told Jim Harbaugh about the crab legs? No, tell us. He he said he had a hook up at Publix, and he said anytime you want to come in, you just grab it and just leave. And I guess uh, one of the newer guys at Publix didn't get the memo. I just kind of tried to be a hero and uh, ran down Jameis. I mean, that's still any way you look at it. He, he's an idiot. Well, yeah, he but <laughs> he got the crab legs mean from not that. I mean, he got he the crab legs from his boy at Publix, and then he just tried to walk the fuck out. Like I love that he had some dude at Publix that was like, he had a oh, Jameis, dude. Anytime you want something, you just come in here, grab it, and walk out. You don't even have to pay for it. He had a crab legs plug, is what he had. Like this dude could override all the rules of commerce for Jameis. Right. He's like the fucking. He's like working in the seafood section at Publix, and he thinks he has the right to tell him he can take remember, anything he wants and walk out. Remember that game show from a long time ago called Supermarket Sweep? Remember that one? <laughs> People just run up and down the oh, aisle yeah. and just throw stuff in their cart and get it. And yeah, that was that's Jameis. You don't have to pay for shit. Dude. Have you ever gotten to go on a, like a, one of those shopping sprees? 
where they're like, you get, you have a whole two minutes. You get to run through this Toys R Us and grab anything you want and put Is it in the car. Is that a thing? No, I haven't been in one of Dude, those. Dude, that's a thing they they do it around Christmas every year. I thought year. that was like a Make a Wish thing. I, no, I've never done that. Yeah, I thought that's for poor people. It <laughs> is. It is for poor people. I was just asking. I don't know if either of y'all have ever been poor. Maybe I'm poor. Maybe. I've always wanted to do that, is my point. Give me like two minutes in a Best Buy. Man. Except all, all I'm doing is grabbing TVs, well, putting yeah. them in my cart. It's hard to fit a bunch of TVs in a cart, though. I could make it work. You're getting like two max. I would Tetris those TVs. You could stack them up on top of the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we're going to have on uh, our buddy Tim. Timmy from TheLeadSports.com. Hey, hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Timmy. There he is. Hey, hey in, guys. Tim. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Back at you, man. How's life? Timmy. It's, it's good. Out here in Philly, freezing my tits off. Why are you in Philly? Uh, we're filming a little something, something. Oh that shit! I, I I could tell you about, but can I um, guess? Can I I'd take have, a shot at it? I, yeah, yeah, go for it. No, I don't think you want me. I don't think you want me to. I think I don't, I don't think you want me to. But yeah, Land- you probably you probably know. I probably told you drunkenly while. Yeah, off, so. I, th- I think I know too much. Land of Dan, though, <laughs> out there in Philly. Yeah, it's my people. Shouts to the watermen. It's fucking freezing, Dan. It is so cold. That, I'm looking forward to it. I go back. Uh, I have like a 26 hour drive ahead of me next week. Fun. I'm back for Christmas. Sweet Jesus. So I get to drive through like all of that snow and the polar vor- vortex coming down. I'd just drive right off a bridge <laughs> if that was if I had to make a 26 hour drive. You could just stay home instead of do that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Rams. Disaster. Fisher. Such a such a disaster. Oh, Jeff. Silly Jeff. It's my boy. Uh, Give us your thoughts, Tim. I know you're a big Rams guy. I do live in Los Angeles. Um, I think the the Fisher, I guess, extension is what really is interesting to me. There's been no details. There's been murmurings, or there had been murmurings, of a Jeff Fisher extension ranging back to before the season. People had talked about it. I was getting scrutinized then. Right. And it gets announced a week before he gets fucking fired. But there's been no details whether the Rams had an opt-out clause, you know, an extra like 10 mil, and just ate it. Um, I mean, it was so abundantly clear it's been abundantly clear that this guy is not the right coach for this team and that he has checked. I mean, he checked out like six weeks ago. And I, don't, then I don't know if he was ever checked in. No, I don't think he checked Sorry, out. He's always checked in. I don't know what you're talking about. He's not going seven and nine again, guys, because he's not going to play. He didn't get a full season. That so was the greatest. The gr- <laughs> but yeah. Sorry, Tim. Keep going. No, I, I just think it's fascinating. I mean, I, he, uh, he's a really, he hasn't been a good coach since Steve McNair played. Well, he has so. six, RIP. six winning seasons in what twenty two, total. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, he has uh, the 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 biggest loss for all of us though out of this whole situation is that he was tied for the record for most losses. He didn't get the break yet. <laughs> oh, damn. I just so, I'm, I'm just hoping he gets an opportunity somewhere else so he can break that record. I love that Middle America, uh, St. St. Louis, Missouri is getting to laugh at the city of Los Angeles. For stealing their huh. dog shit franchise. <laughs> Such a dog shit franchise. Jared Goff was the stupidest fucking pick ever in NFL history. If anybody watched any tape of Goff and Wentz going into that draft, Wentz stood out in every single category. And Jared Goff is just, oh, God, he's never going to be very good at professional football. Why is that? Tim? Anyway, is it something, I just don't, is it something I don't about think, his hands? Or? I don't think. I mean, he could be. I, I'm like, like he could be. I think his ceiling is Alex Smith, and I think I think Carson Wentz. And I know you're a pessimistic Eagles fan. I just I love Wentz. I think, you know, Peterson had like three weeks of really good plays, and then like <laughs> hasn't been able to think of like anything else creative since then. Yeah, no, I love um, Wentz. Wentz has been great in spite of his offensive line and his coach, who's an awful play yeah. caller. Yeah, we'll see. And his receivers, he has make, no, he has nothing around him. Yeah, if they get. You there, Tim? I hate. Oh, you cut out for a second. Repeat what you just said. Sorry, I was gonna say. I mean, so with with a young NFL quarterback, the coaches, Trink Daniels, and they run a really, um, really good offense around Goff, then he could actually turn out to be solid. I don't think he has the physical tools Wentz does. Um, pretty much, I, I mean, Wentz is bigger, stronger, faster, more accurate. Everything, um, everything you want a quarterback to be, but. He's got a chance. Goff could be decent if they get a McDaniel's, or if they get a sh- like a defensive-minded coach who just wants to pound the ball with Gurley for a yard every time and 
and die slowly, then he's his career is going the way of David Carr. You got to have those physical tools. Yeah, got to have tools, baby. Well, David, David Carr, that's your boy, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> According to all reports, though, like every coach in the history of the league that's still alive has been mentioned for this LA Rams job. Uh, True. So you're thinking, but is McDaniel's the hottest coaching commodity in the NFL right now? Apparently, interest McDaniel's as of the Rams. I think he. I don't see how you can get an offensive-minded coach to inherit Blake Bortles in Jacksonville. I mean, Bortles is. I, I don't see it. Like you can't. It's like Chuck Knobloch throwing a second base. Once that's in your head that you can't throw things, um, and once your body and your mind can't work as a team cohesively to take an object in your hand and accurately uh, throw it to another thing. Like, I don't see how Blake Bortles gets over what he's, what he's dealing with right now. Cause and the that's, guy like, that's unfortunate totally when, when, you, football. when it's your job let's, to let's, throw let's, things. A professional let's, athlete getting the yips is one of my favorite occurrences in the history of anything. Yes. I absolutely love it. I don't know. It's, let's, it's, it's so interesting to me when that happens. Let's not go after my boy Bobby. All right. Uh, Have you seen what he's done to his throwing motion? Yeah, he now because, throws like a pitcher. Because he, he, he changed up. his quarterback coach to the same guy that coached Tebow, which was no, an awful, awful move. He's mentally fucked. He did. No, he did. And, um, but I, I do have some inside sources, too, that during the entire offseason, he may or may not have spent the majority of the time at Jack's Beach Bars on a bender and just like... That has nothing to do with the yips. Fucking man. everything that moves. Dude, there are plenty of great quarterbacks out there who drink... Not only the entire offseason, but the entire season and didn't have the yips. But all he has to do is go back to Carson Palmer's brother that he was with during the draft, pro- the whole Jesse draft Palmer? process. No, no, um, Jesse Palmer's not. Jordan. Jordan. Jordan Palmer. Oh, yeah. I don't think Jesse Palmer's Jay, related whatever. To him. I know they're not. <laughs> Jesse Palmer's definitely not related to him. <laughs> no. But he just needs to get back with him in the offseason and just stay in California the entire time and just do some fucking like cone drills and. He'll, yeah, he'll get, that'll he'll get do it. it back. That's it. That's why you need some cone I, drills. I, have I Alan, think, have, have Alan Robinson go out with them and uh, Marquise Lee, and th- they'll figure it out. Bortles, Bortles going to be I, fine. He's not the problem. Gus Bradley. Right, Gus Bradley. Enough about problem. the fucking Jaguars. They're terrible. Dan's got the podcast yips right now. Good God. Also, <laughs> Dan, Dan placed a bet with me at the beginning of the season that the Jags would win the AFC. No, no, the, <laughs> a, I, the AFC South. No. And that they would play the Patriots in the AFC Championship and lose the Patriots. Okay. Well, that they would make the AFC Championship. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hey, they're, a, they're a top five talent team in the NFL. There's... Timmy, tonight's, tonight's game, the Rams are 16-point dogs against the Seahawks for the Thursday night NFL game, even though Russell Wilson threw five interceptions last week. Yeah, he's going to come out pissed and just absolutely – I mean, the Rams – their defense quit. I mean, their defense, which has a lot of talent, quit. They're, they're obvious. They're coming in. It's a short week. They don't give a fuck. I mean, maybe they all, you know, pull Lawrence Taylor, start a couple lines for this game and go apeshit. But the expectation has to be that the Seahawks are going to come out motivated, pissed, focused, and absolutely steamroll the Rams. I'm just happy I have old Thomas Rawls on the fantasy team. I'm hoping he gets like three bullshit touchdowns tonight. I don't know. The Rams always play the Seahawks tough, and they sure. just they just named their special uh, special teams coach the interim coach, right? And they're Awful. about to. Sm- yeah, I, I agree. If I had to bet on it, I, I mean, I wouldn't. I'm not going to bet on uh, Seattle to cover that line. Sixteen points, bro. Yeah, I don't think they're covering sixteen. Sixteen points. But I I also, if there's one thing you could say has been great about the Rams this season, it's their special teams. They're about to smash the NFL punting record. Oh, yeah, Hecker. Hecker's the best player. Got to punt a lot when you have no offense. Yeah, exactly. the over under is really good. The over under is thirty nine and a half. Wow. And the line is sixteen. Ugh. I think this is gonna be ugly. So that's a crazy ass. I mean, I've never seen anything. I'm I'm on the under thirty nine and a half, and I'm on the Rams plus sixteen. I think it's like the a Rams t- may not yeah. score. It's like a twelve six game. Yeah, <laughs> twelve to six. It's gonna be a garbage game. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be absolute shit. It's gonna be a baseball score. Yeah. The only way the Rams score is if Wilson throws a pick on the wrong side of the field and they get a field goal out of it. That's which that's, is that could which I'm hoping happens twice, and then maybe Seattle scores like twenty one and and we all go home happy. I mean, yeah, the Rams still have a decent pass rush. Yeah. Tim, what else no, you want to I- talk about? I don't know. I think Fisher is, was the main thing. Um, this game, Thursday night game, is gonna, as Richard Sherman 
said an absolute poop fest, which I love because that's what these things are. He called it a poop um, fest? Yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. That's Sherman hilarious. called it a poop fest. I, I highly doubt, given the ratings of Thursday Night Games this year, that that's going to continue on. Um, they'll probably kill it. Like 20, they might do it next year. They might probably do it in 2018. But you think they're going to kill them off? Man. I really enjoyed Thursday Night Games. I did too. Yeah. Sher- Sherman's main but, argument against it was for player safety. So oh, yeah. Guys that, turn around, I got to yeah. play a few days afterward. That part sucks. Bodies are broken down, which makes <laughs> sense. But from, from our standpoint, we don't care about that. But no. there's there's yeah. no way money-grubbing Goodell is going to give up a Thursday night where the NFL is the spotlight. Like he wants Ratings are shit, but I really enjoy them. I, we have a Saturday night game this this week. They, the they hell d- is that? They start to do that. Like week 14, 15, Because 16. college football's done. Now they have yeah, that, yeah. those slots to fill. That's all, that's right. It's like two or three games every Saturday. It, this, it throws up my whole fucking weekend. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> well, Tim, uh, thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thanks, boys. We enjoy, love you. Uh, if I don't, I'll probably talk to you one more time before the holidays, or if not, enjoy them. Hit the lead sports.com, Subscribe to their newsletter. Get some great shit in your inbox every morning. Appreciate it, Tim. Happy talk Hanukkah. to you soon. Go to thanks, gyms, boys. Tim. Go to gyms. I'm right by it, dude. I'm actually about to hit that up for lunch right now. Nice. Nice. Uh, all right, guys. Hey. Love, you. Love having Timmy on. Good dude, that Tim. A good man, that Timmy. Good dude, Tim Livingston. Knows good spots, too, to go around the country. Yeah, he gets around. Yeah. Big he, shoe guy. Big shoe guy. Shoe collector. Tennis shoes. Good shoes. Kablamskis. Kablamskis, as they call them. Uh, Got to do a reading. We're giving you all these lines. We're giving you good picks. For example, the under 39 and a half in the... Uh, Ram Seahawks game tonight. Go bet on mybookie.ag. That's a website. Hammer that under. All your Christmas money. Mybookie.ag is a website where you can go bet and gamble and have the time of your life. And if you use the the code word, it's not even a promo code. It's a code word. What? Now, now. Backdoor. That's one word. When you sign up, you will get a bonus just because you're a listener of our our podcast. You know? You didn't think you'd get anything out of this. Look at you now. Don't ever say we never did anything for you. Don't ever say that. You're swimming in it. Visit mybookie.ag today. Get some money down and score a big win. You play, you win, you get paid. Don't be a pussy. Check Check out out mybookie. Sign up today. Now, backdoor is a good code word, but not a great safety word. Bad safety word. No. You don't want that. Good as a code word, bad as a safety word. What's your safe safe word, Dan? My safety word is... uh, Man, it's in another language. I can't really get into That's it. That's weird. It's more. It's like Arabic. Okay. Yeah. That's not good. What else we have to talk about in this fucking podcast? What? What else we have to talk about? Oh well, first we're gonna we're gonna take a second out to listen to hear from some of our buddies on other podcasts. This is my favorite part at Grand X Media. Do you know that those assholes on Touching Base recorded one while I wasn't here? I believe that. Like, there are three people on that podcast. Like, I'm one of the and you're not regular the pro- co-hosts, and I'm not anywhere to be heard. Are we about to hear that? Pro- I hope, I hope they play that, that one right now. Yeah. Bunch of assholes. Let's find out. Let's listen. You're sitting at your desk. You're bored. You're combing through spreadsheets wondering how the hell you're supposed to distract yourself. You know what the answer is to that? The Touching Base podcast. You got time to kill, baby. Kill it with us. Touching Base. Just give us a shot to earn your business. I promise we will not let you down. Thank you. Subscribe on iTunes. Hey guys, this is Rob Fox from Total Frat Move, and I'm here to remind you to listen to the Inside TFM podcast. We have new episodes every Thursday. If you want to hear me and the other TFM writers sitting around drinking beers and bullshitting about God knows what, anything from college news to fraternity news to just what's going on in the world, then definitely search TFM on iTunes and give us a listen and subscribe to the Inside TFM podcast. Hey, this is the Dudes Doing Business podcast. This week, we are talking all things Christmas or holiday party. Basically, how you can keep your job and not completely blow it. We're going to take user questions, but we're going to share some of our own personal anecdotes because we've all been there. Some of us have even been that guy. You even get to hear our, uh, what is it, top four tips for how to uh, do your Christmas party right. The hottest top four tips you're going to hear anywhere else. Give us a shot this week. That's at Dudes Doing Business. Hit us up on iTunes or SoundCloud. Now it's time. First off, thank you to our our friends at those other podcasts. Good but people. It, but it's good guys. But it's time for the fantastic free money five finger fillet, which still exists. Damn. Regardless of the fact 
that we are no longer just a college football podcast, this segment somehow survived. We have some exciting matchups to talk about today, too. Bowl season. We're going to make some big picks on a bunch of games. And uh, our celebrity guest picker this week is, surprise, it's Dan. Oh. We are really scraping the bottom <laughs> of the barrel he's here. Been here the, he's he's been here the whole time. I didn't even know I was the guest picker. He's been here That's the whole time. surprise for me. Well, now you have to make these picks off the top of your head. Yeah. That's where we put you. That's the spot you're in. But, I mean, that's where we, that's where we flourish. That is, uh, in pressure situations, you do shine like when a we, diamond. But when we actually put thought into things, like, that's, that's when shit goes wrong. I agree with you. All these lines are current as of 10.30 a.m. Central Time on uh, Thursday, December 15th. And they're all from mybookie.ag, which is obviously our, our sponsor. Uh... First, let's get into some Saturday bowl games. The Air Force Reserves Celebration Bowl. I don't know what we're celebrating, but we're celebrating. It's in Atlanta. Oh, we're celebrating the Armed Forces. Okay, that's great. And the Reserves and the Air Force. Celebrate those good times. Come on. Uh, Air Force Academy. I've been there. It's a beautiful place. So it's NC Central. Don't know what that is. And Grambling. North Carolina Central. NC Central and Grambling. Jesus. I didn't know Grambling was Division One football team i thought they were fcs would we be doing our listeners a disservice to actually pick these games no i think i'm gonna be real with you i have literally never heard of nc central i have not either honestly i did not know that existed and 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 i say that with all due respect to anybody who goes to nc central or or went to nc central never come across my espn ticker right but you know grambling uses the green bay packer logo yeah they do different color scheme different color scheme i think they pay a fee i don't don't know know. i made that up if they do that Grambling is minus 14 and a half in this game. It's a big bowl line. And you know what? I'm going to go personally with NC Central. I just feel like they've got a tough team, a gritty team. It's it's the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. If there's one game you're going to get up for this year, it's this one. And if in Central North Carolina, that is pure grit. Pure pure heart and soul of America. You have to think about the gift bag they're getting for this game. Probably has some decorative soaps in it. Maybe These some, guys are coming out clean. Some fossil watches. A pack of playing cards. Pack, pack of, th- maybe a maybe a thimble. There's a thimble in some there. Some Wrigley gum is thrown in mm-hmm. there. Yep. I'm going I'm going NC Central plus 14 and a half. Dylan, who do you like? I'm in pounding the- NC Central. Oh, <laughs> I man. have a great feeling about that. How many units are you putting on this? Like I'm five? putting seven units. Oh, the my first, God. My first seven-unit play of the year oh is my going God. on NC Central. <laughs> they're, they're, just, they're just due. A seven-unit play in they the Air Force Reserve They have 14 and a half points. Bowl. <laughs> they don't even need that many. Dan, who do you like in the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl? You know, he's putting seven units on this game, <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to go. I'm just gonna have to go against Dylan because I, I you're going against my seven unit play. <laughs> I'm well, I, I got to be honest with you. That seems Ballsy. risky. That yeah. seems really risky. I'm gonna go Grambling. All right. Well, how I many they, how many units do you have on Grambling? <laughs> Give me five units on Grambling. Oh fuck. Grambling wins by fifteen. There's there's gonna be a big swing in monetary currency taking place here the fact that they use the the green bay packers g is crazy like they're just sitting around like we've got we got to come up with a logo it's not fuck it let's just it's not crazy it's pathetic like how how easy is it to come up with your own g come on man just just hop on to uh you know microsoft word and just play with different fonts and you'll you'll and that's it something that's that's the extent of being but grambling is a historic historically black college though too right what does that have to do with anything nothing i'm just saying it's just a fun fact Okay. Say, As is North Carolina. Are bad designers? No. North Carolina Central University is uh, like an all black school. Mm-hmm. They're both historically so black. So uh, what I'm saying about this game is, don't even tune in for the actual game. Tune in for the halftime. Oh yeah. You no. want You're gonna see the. You want to see the band. Grambling Stomp has the yard. a badass band. Stomp the they yard. Will fuck shit up. What was that movie with Nick Cannon? Like they invent I dance think it was moves. called Drumline. Drumline. Yeah. Damn, that movie was lit. Next Dan, bowl. Dan, that's a great point. No, that's what I'm saying. You tune in for the, the band. According to Micah, NC Central is also historically black. I'm sure this will be like a battle of the band situation that happens to ha- be around a football game. Yeah. Yeah. I need to tune in. Football, Saturday? Football game. Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl in Atlanta. Tune in. Next up. Can you buy halftime only tickets and just go for halftime? <laughs> anyway. Next up, the highly anticipated, maybe my favorite bowl of the year. The Gildan New Mexico Bowl in Albuquerque. Let's talk about their gift basket for <laughs> for a second. It's, it's, it's just it's, loaded with T-shirts, right? It's like seven Walmart. blank white Gildan tees <laughs> in, in a variety of sizes. 
Uh, and that's it. There's nothing else. Yeah, they don't get it. decorative soap. No. They get teas. Blank teas. Just blank teas. Which, I don't know about Yikes. you, but I, I, I both slang and bang in my white tea, which I assume everyone in this Gilded New Mexico Bowl will be doing. See, I, I saw, I could see you as, like, growing up, you were definitely a tall tea, Gilded White Tea. Gil- I, Gilden, I should have been, but I wasn't. No one, no. no one seeks out a Gilded Tea, like, in the store. You just end up with a Gilded <laughs> Tea. Like, oh, I have this t-shirt that's pretty cool with the logo on it. Oh, guess what? It's a Gilded. Right. Surprise. That's, check the tag. Yeah. You got a Gilded. Surprise, Gilden. motherfucker. You bought a Gilded. You're like, you didn't even know it. <laughs> Like you, if you're listening, you have twelve in your closet right now. Yeah, or you're just not a t-shirt guy. Yeah, which, hey, either, sorry, you either like have a up Gildan on Gildans. or you have like a beefy tea. It's the fucking UTSA Roadrunners versus the New Mexico Lobos. Uh, UNM is favored minus seven and a half. We already know how we feel about UTSA. Uh, yeah, we don't have to talk about it anymore. The Roadrunners are scum. It's, it's a been, shit program. Scum. It's well established on this podcast. It's a shit program. Shit school. To hell with everybody at UTSA. I'm all over UNM. If you fucks with UTSA, we don't want fucks with you. Yeah, unsubs- if you if you if unsubscribe. If you're a roadrunner, unsubscribe. Leave us a bad review. Give us one star and get out. We don't want you here. You're bringing bad juju and you're costing us all money. Are we all in New Mexico? Does anybody need to pick this game? No. We're all in New Mexico. We're, now, yeah. this this next bowl is interesting because it's the Las Vegas Bowl, but Micah has up here in parentheses, no sponsor. That can't Which be I true. find... Does La- t- it's, well, the city, of, the Las city Vegas? of Las Vegas. I'm intrigued. The city of Las Vegas has to be the sponsor. They have like a, uh, a $500 Bellagio chip in their gift basket. <laughs> <laughs> that would be tight. Yeah. This is the one you want to go to, if we're being real. Either this one oh, or the well, Bahamas yeah. Bowl. No, the Bahamas Bowl, too. Of one of those. One I, mean, yeah, I want to go Nassau. gamble or I want to go to the Bahamas. So wait, is Major Applewhite coach in Houston? Because he was the offense coordinator. So yeah, he got, yeah, he's he's already t- he's taken yeah. over. Yeah, uh, no sponsor. It's just the Las Vegas. The city of Las Vegas is your sponsor, which is beautiful. We tried to sell them some shit. The city of Las Vegas. Yeah, they're they're like, yeah, we'll think about it, and they never got back. To they, they never they never hooked me up with a hotel room when I went either. Yeah, we we tried to yeah we pitched them this awesome party, but they didn't bite. It would have been tight. I'm just saying, Las Vegas, get back to us. University of Houston versus uh, San Diego State. <laughs> yeah, Las gonna Vegas, be a good game. if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, this is a uh, this is a good bowl game, if we're being honest. It's better than than everything we've talked about so far. Yeah, no, but this is gonna be a good game. It's better than uh, UTSA in New Mexico, University of Houston Cougars and the San Diego State. What the fuck are they? Aztecs. The Aztecs. Everybody knows that. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Aztecs plus three and a half. Uh, I, I'm gonna go Cougs minus three and a half because. I just believe in in the power of Major Applewhite's name. I'm going San Diego State, and because I think the players are a little uh, thrown off by their their coaching shakeup, they're not. They're, but it's they're, like their fearless leader has been replaced. You know how you wear a power tie when you need like a a red power tie when you when you need, you need to edge. harness some power. Yeah, Major Applewhite is a power name. Yeah, but it gives you that. You know what he looks like, right? He's not, he's not a, he doesn't have a power. Uh, Just don't look at him. Well, you got to look at him. I don't think you do. I think you don't ever make don't ever make contact eye contact. Look away. Listen to what he has to say, but don't look at him because he's a goober. Just take the name and harness that power. Here's the thing, okay. though. Uh, San Diego State does have something to play for. Uh, Donnell Pumphrey is with that kid's good. <clears throat> he's within range of the all-time Russian record set by Ron Dane. I think he is. He weighs about a buck thirty-five, but he is see. lightning quick. And I think he's like the second leading oh, rusher in the nation. I watched the highlight boy. tape of this dude. He's really good. What is his name? Donnell, Donnell Pumphrey. 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 Like pump. Free. I think he only needs like a hundred yards to break the record or something. Oh uh, well, I, I'm rooting for him then. But I'm also betting on Cougars, so yeah. I got state here, man. All hey, right, give me state. All right, fine. I'll be by myself. The Las Vegas Bowl. We need to go to Las Vegas Bowl. The next one. Is the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl? <laughs> That's not a thing. Camellia? What is Raycom Media? What do they do, Micah? They make Ren- I think they make Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> they own a series of television stations. Interesting. Uh, we're going to say they nice make the cartoon Ren and Stimpy. The Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. That's, it's a, that's in, a mouthful. It's in Montgomery, Alabama. That's a mouthful. Home of Forrest Gump. No, he was. He was from Greenbow. My bad. But A- Alabama. It doesn't matter. Appalachian State versus Toledo. American Alabama. A lot of people don't know that. 
He wasn't all American. In the in the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl, wh- what is Camellia? Is Nobody that part of the that. brand name? I'm confused. <laughs> it's a okay. Mike, it looks like know. it might the be a flower. The logo looks like a flower. It looks like a, either a flower or a red hurricane. Uh, Appalachian State versus Toledo. Toledo's minus one. So essentially, a, this is a pick 'em. This I'm is going Appalachian again. State because I feel like uh, they just that region has better athletes than Toledo. You didn't even know what region it was in until 10 minutes ago. I knew ago. it was southeast. I knew that. Appalachian oh, okay. Mountains and all that shit. Yeah. I, my guess was Tennessee. I was wrong there. It was North Carolina. My guess was Virginia. Incorrect. Dan, who do you like in... There's, there's a camellia. It, it is a... Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's a, a flower. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty little who flower. Knew? Mm, who knew? Look at that. Not, not me. We're not, we're, we're not plant talk guys, though. We'll tweet out we're a animal picture talk guys. of we're a camellia... Well, but maybe there's some type of animal that feeds exclusively on this flower. Oh, shit. We'll that, find out later in the show. Stay tuned. Uh, Dan, who do you like in Appalachian State Toledo at the, in the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl? I saw, <laughs> saw App State play once this year against Tennessee. They could not throw the ball. I think for whatever reason, I think Toledo can just like spread it out. Now, for those who don't know, it <laughs> is. <laughs> for whatever reason, you think that? Have you I, seen him? No, I haven't seen him play just, at all this year. But like, you just got a I, feeling? I just, like, when I hear Toledo football, I'm like, oh, yeah, they fucking. They, for those who don't know, it, it, it is beneficial to points. be able to throw the football yeah. and uh, to move the offense. So I'm going Toledo. I'm going to take Appalachian State because Dan just picked Toledo based on his gut feeling that they can that they can spread they it air out. Air it out. That they can air it out. <laughs> He's never seen him play. You probably can't name a I player. I think like they can throw team. the ball around the yard a little bit. Like, you're like <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You hear Toledo football, you're like, yeah, yeah they, they can throw the fucking football. The next bowl game is the Ooh, this R, was exciting. The R plus L Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Don't say New Orleans like that. New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. This is between Southern Miss and UL Lafayette. Mm. Actually, I know someone from Lafayette, and she pronounces it Lafayette. Raging Cajuns. Lafayette. Really? Lafayette, yeah. So. That sounds oh, so much bro. stupider than Lafayette. She's from there, and she so she would know. Lafayette. Yeah. All right. Lafayette. Yeah. Well, we just talk about Cajuns. Or um, no, we, we make uh, a lot of picks talking okay, about Cajuns. Okay, Dan. Dan, you should stop. That is not a Cajun accent. No, that's an Orgeron. Oh, my God. Dan, you should stop. <laughs> is it R&L or R plus L? R and L carriers. They're uh no one knows what they do either. They also sponsor a golf tournament, I think. They make styrofoam. They're a trucking company. I've yeah. I've been to this bowl game. They make styrofoam trucks. Thanks for telling us. Big in New Orleans though, because they do sponsor. Well they they run commercials during the bowl game explaining the New Orleans what they Open do. Or the uh, just a quick thing. Friday night before the New Orleans Bowl, the Gin Blossoms and Better Than Ezra headline a free concert there. Fuck yeah. You know why it's free? Because no one would pay to go see those those two bands. You wouldn't see better than Ezra. They haven't been popular since 1997, and even then if, they weren't that popular. If you're better than One Ezra, hit wonder. if you're an original member of Better Than Ezra, and you didn't overdose on heroin in the 90s, and you're still alive, you fucked up. That's not how it works. Imagine being a member of Better Than Ezra, and you're like sticking with the dream of being like <laughs> in Better Than Ezra. Like, why not just move on and just go like you're, sell insurance? You're or like something. pissed drunk at karaoke bars singing your old yeah. Better Than Ezra songs. Like, there's like, no way they're making. I like, wrote money. this. I, I, I wrote this. I'm pretty confident saying I make more money than lead singer of Better Than Ezra. Right I now. hope so. Yeah, I hope. Very confident in saying that. If I don't make more money than the lead singer of Better Than Ezra. We need to go start a. We need to go do something else. <laughs> we need to start a band because there's some shit that's going. Some, I'm on. I'm gonna take Louisiana Lafayette because I bet against them earlier this year and and got they got me. I'm taking Southern Miss for no real reason. Tight, Dan. Who are you taking? Yeah, give me UL Lafayette. Great, because of the nickname Raging Cajuns. Lafayette. It is a cool nickname. It's a cool. It's a cool nickname. Some people are offended by that name. It is cool, unlike Dan's Cajun accent that he keeps trying to push. The next bowl is the Auto Nation Cure Bowl. Dan's got the yips still. What are we trying to cure? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, it's up the, to you. Can we get the fucking run sheet back up there? The Cure Bowl? I, like, it's the Auto Nation Cure Bowl. In, it's, it's, I'm going to guess breast cancer because it's always breast cancer. I hope so. It's because I hope it's not like, it's you not, know, for, like, it's not scrotal We're cancer? not trying to cure flat tires or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing, man. The Auto Nation Cure Bowl, and it, it's in Citrus Auto Bowl, Nation Orlando. Bowl. It's in Orlando. It, it's called the uh, Camping World Citrus Bowl now, or whatever the fuck. Okay, it's, it's sponsored by something. But well, uh, Mike is really blowing it up here for those who can't see. It's a home game for UCF playing Arkansas State. It's a big game for your boy too, because be- beginning of the season, I bet Jared that UCF uh, over under seven wins. I had over. So this Se- is it. Seven's a push. They're six and six. They need to win this in order for me to push with Jared. Best case is a push. For and UCF yeah. is favored minus five and a half. Uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna take the the, the, the Golden Knights. We're not golden. I'm gonna take the We're just knights. We're just the knights. So that's not that's not a thing anymore? No, it hasn't been a thing for Is like a decade. Is that the name of the new Las, the new Las Vegas hockey, hockey team? Hockey team, yeah. Las Vegas Golden Knights. You know what? I'm gonna take them too. The go- I'm gonna go double down on the Golden Knights. We haven't been golden for ten okay. years. You're the Golden Knights. They had, they had some over. kind of copyright issue with their name. Actually, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. They they uh, applied for the trademark and they didn't get the trademark. Well, that's unfortunate. So what are they going to do? I don't know. Just be the Knights. <laughs> they can still be the team, but I think they just. I, I think all, they they already printed like a million T-shirts. And no, I think they can they can still be the Golden Knights, but like anybody else can just make Golden Knights shit and. So l- let's let's sell some some Golden Knights merch. We could. We should make Golden Knights merch. They are the <laughs> hottest team in football. Hockey. Hockey. In hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get into hockey, man. Hockey's awesome. I just, you know, it's a regional thing, and I just, I've never watched it, but it's a great sport. Your Philadelphia Flyers, 10-game win streak. See, if, if I'm going to fu- get into hockey, I'm going for the Golden Knights. I, I want to start fresh. Yeah. Somehow, uh, Dan pre-podcast asked if we could talk about the Flyers' 10-game win streak, and we explicitly said no. He still found a way to work it in. Yeah. Worked it in, because I'm a pro. We all we good are for talking you. all sports. So we are looking at pictures, though. This cure ball looks like it's for breast cancer. I'm seeing pink ribbons. It's good. It's, it's all good. pink themes. It's so all pink themes. You yeah. know, that's a good point. That breast cancer gets a lot of love, a lot of play. Uh, what happened? What, like, Nut cancer gets nothing. Dick cancer gets nothing. There's no colon cancer. Bowl. Because nope. fucking Susie G. Coleman has a fucking like lock on the cancer game, and it's bullshit. Who is she, Susie she does G. Have Coleman? A, she does have a lock on the cancer game. That's true. <laughs> Who the hell is that? <laughs> is that a person? The she's foundation. Susan, yeah, Susan she's G. the. Yeah, Susan G. Dylan, you have to make a pick in this game. I don't know who's playing because Mike had ruined the. It's, it's University of Central Florida versus Arkansas State. Arkansas <laughs> State is plus five and a half in the Auto Nation Cure Bowl. I'm taking Arkansas State because I want Dan to lose his bet. Okay. Good reason. Sorry, Dan. I, I have broke. To go, might as well be broker. Yeah, might as well be broker. That's it for the the, I mean, I'll the pick, bowl. I, games. I guess I'll make my pick. I didn't make my pick. You did. I assume you're, you're picking, picking UCF. UCF. Yeah, I am, but I'm not confident because they're fucking... <laughs> He's going to pick against him. Fucking offense sucks dick. That's offensive. Well, I took UCF. Now I don't... I, I'm changing my pick. I'm going to Arkansas State because Dan says UCF's offense sucks dick. Which um, you don't want in an offense. My mom listens, Dan. Sorry. It's it's fine. It's fine. Dan, you, are you taking UCF, though? Yes, I'm, I'm taking UCF. Okay. Let's move on from the Bulls, although I will miss talking about them. Uh, Sunday, big NFL game, Tampa Bay-Dallas, Dallas minus seven. Uh, I've already said that I'm on I'm on Bucks and I'm on Bucks Bucks plus seven. I'm on Jameis, famous Jameis. Let's let's ride. We done boys. Yeah, I think that that was. Yeah, we've done enough here. We done boys. Yeah. You're them boys. Uh, New England versus Denver. Denver's plus three. I don't know how Denver's plus three. I they just lost to fucking the Titans. I'm. All over New England. New England is, is one of the hotter teams in the NFL I'm right All now, over New England. Despite losing Gronk. No Gronk. Half of a Martellus Bennett. Does not matter. Games in Denver? D- fuck, yeah. But, dude, Brady was throwing touchdowns to guys. Again, this happens at least a couple games a year where, like, a few receivers go down or Gronk gets hurt and you're like, oh, shit, what are they going to do on offense? He's throwing touchdowns, next thing you know, to a guy named, like, Jason Daniels, who you've it never heard matter. of. He, they literally picked up from, like, he was like a bagger at a grocery store like the week before, and now he's a, he's a Pro Bowl receiver. All you need are two hands, and Brady will get you the football. He was throwing 75-yard touchdown passes to guys that I have never heard that of. White dude. Well, that white dude. Chris Hogan is his name? Something Don't know Hogan. who that is, but yeah, that's one of them. He's not bad. He's for a white dude. That's what you could say about any white it's man that they could put in a Patriots, Patriots jersey receiver. and throw him out there on the field. You and me could go out there and Brady's throwing touchdown passes. Belichick teams. doesn't believe in like a talented receiver. He's like, I'm going to beat you with like a bunch of scrubs that look like they belong. He doesn't like on a, an intramural field. He had Randy Moss for a few years, and he's just like, I'm, that that was, end, I'm not doing his, that again. At Dude, the end of his career, but that though. was the the season that Brady and Moss broke that record was so fucking fun to watch. Yeah, because yeah. you just had Randy Moss run a. Fly route. Every yeah, single play. Every, yeah. every single play. Fly route. Imagine, fly route, if, fly imagine route. if Brady had, you know, like the Steelers uh, wide receivers. Or... Oh, my God. Or, wait, just, wait, or just one, like, badass receiver. Football, football wouldn't be fun to it's watch unbel- anymore. He's unbelievable. It's stupid how good There's Tom also Brady a theory is. that he would not be capable with with those receivers. He needs... He needs a challenge. These, he these get too bored. Yeah, he needs these these dipshits... Get too bored throwing to a wide To run receiver. crossing I routes. I don't know if you can call dipshit. Edelman's Edelman, good. Edelman was a random dipshit. Edelman though. is really good, but he's not a freak athlete. He's he, and he's five ten. 
he's, he's quick he's as shit. He's a little fast he's white scrappy. Guy. He's a good athlete. But he's, he's not gonna he's not gonna college. blow by you. Brady's putting you know? the ball in his chest. If you can't catch it, you suck. And then he's fast and he's white. Nobody sees him. He just squirts through the middle like a water I'll book. tell you what. You give me two weeks to learn the New England offense. and I'll out there. And yeah. I, let me play. Give me, put 30 four snaps, give me 30 snaps. I will catch four balls for 62 yards and one score. I, I'd put money on that yeah. right now. 62 well, yards. Uh, it depends on the de- defense we're playing against. But I, I, yeah, I it's got to be, on. let's say, the, uh, the do- against the Dolphins. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Br- Brady will get you 62 yards in a, in a touchdown. But I'm gonna, but I gotta be like, yo, you gotta look for me. I'm, I'm gonna be there. I need the ball. Oh, he knows because yeah. he's looking for the smallest white dude on the field to throw the ball <laughs> That's true. as hard as he can. That's at you. true. But I would be, uh, my body would be spent. At, I need to go to the hospital <laughs> right well, after. I mean, the yeah, game. you might die, but <laughs> yeah. you'd get 62 yards. I need to go to the hospital. I'm, I'm on, I'm on New England. Like I said, same. I'm gonna go Denver. It's a must win. So yeah, give but me they the, suck. Give me the three points. They don't. They're not. Bad. Dude, they suck right now. Shouts to our boy Klein, Klein Kubiak. Yeah. Shouts to Klein. Shouts to the defending Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos. Who told but us they, before the season started, he said, "You're welcome to come up to a game. I'll get you tickets as long as you don't ask for the Patriots game because we can't. I can't get you those tickets. It's a hot item. Well, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Fair enough. I just think Von Miller for like this type of game just takes it to another level. Like he'll have two strip sacks. Super Bowl. You think Von Miller is going to strip sack Brady twice? Yes. If you realize if you tackle Brady, it's a 15 yard penalty, uh, whether he's holding the ball or not. Brady gets so much respect, like the other team just refuses to sack him. You're like, not no, allowed man, to we're touch just... him. No, did you see when he threw that block? Or oh yeah. yeah, that that was one of the most like that was incredible. Nobody shown plays I've ever seen. That nobody they, they, that they didn't just they crush knew that him. they they like we're not going to touch you, man. If you want to lay block, that's fine. But if you don't, that's cool too. Just come on through. That for was those, amazing. For those who are not aware, we're talking about the clip in which Brady is is running downfield, half ass pretending he like he's going to himself gonna, accidentally as a lead. Like blocker. he's going to throw a lead block. <laughs> and he's in a situation where any other white dude on the planet is about to get blown up by a linebacker. That's a that's a linebacker's dream. I mean, this is like, and and they they were passing him. It reminds me of in uh, which movie is it where oh. The, the movie where Brad Pitt, World War Z, the world has been taken over by zombies. And, and Brad Pitt has to, they figure out that like if you have cancer, if you're dying of cancer or any, any deadly disease, the zombies ignore you. Really? So Brad Pitt injects himself with AIDS or something. Nice. And then he walks out into this room filled with zombies and he's just walking through this like crowd of zombies and they don't even look at him. That's how Brady was on the field. Well, he should have been destroyed, and they're just going around him. Yeah, if that had been like Ryan Tannehill, for example, or a Sam Bradford, or Brock Osweiler, they, they would they would be uh, in one of those casts where you can't move your entire like torso, a body maybe, cast. maybe six a feet body under. cast. Yeah. yeah, but they let Brady just walk right through. It was it's it an really is an clip. amazing. Play. And the video he posted on his Facebook page made it even better because oh, he yeah. said it's like '80s hair metal and just like put like yeah. clips of trains like going <laughs> through snow. Like they're going back to the sideline. The, the other head coach like, "Hey, hey, good good job not touching Tom, man." Yeah, we, that we don't want that. We don't want that blood on our hands. Your no. whole team gets fined if that shit happens. Yeah. You don't want that. Uh, we, we we've got locks of the week here. Uh, I'm gonna make my lock of the week the under in this. In this shit show of a Thursday night game, the poop bowl is what bowl. we're gonna call it. Seattle, St. Louis under thirty nine and a half. Uh, hit that. Who's playing in the in the Gildan t shirt bowl again? Um, My lock's let, coming from that game. Let me was, let me read it for you here, Dylan. I have a lot of stake It's New in Mexico. Game. It's the Gildan New Mexico Bowl, and it's UTSA versus. Oh yeah, uh, I got I got New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, so New Mexico lock. is your lock minus seven and a half. Right. Dan is still scrolling through his phone. Um. To find his lock of the week. Dan's an off-the-cuff type of guy. You got to respect that move, though, because yeah. honestly, I think your chances are better if you haven't overthought this. You find one that you love, and you ride it. You know, I'm. this is an all-sports podcast. I'm going to go, give me the Milwaukee Bucks, minus two tonight against the Chicago Bulls. You, Jesus. You, you have no idea how much <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> Jesus. I, I fucking love that pick. That's a great pick. I'm putting money on the Bucks right now. I'm serious. I've got to pull up hey, my you know phone. The, you know, when Micah was in D.C., he went to a Wizards-Bullets game. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Wizards-Nuggets game. That is absolute shit. Wizards-Nuggets game. He said there were like 14 people. That's I there. couldn't name trash. two players on the Nuggets. No. Is Fareed still on there? I know John Wall plays for the Wiz, and that's, but that's all I can name. And Bradley Beal, but... Since we're on it, since we're on the NBA momentarily, 
I'm, I'm, I have to ask a question. Is Mike D'Antoni the greatest coach in the history of basketball? No. Why are you asking You that? saw what he did with the Knicks. Is it too early to say? Probably. But I have a feeling he ends up maybe maybe as the most revered coach in the history of round ball. When has he ever won a championship? He this does, 2017. He just, he just puts up points. <laughs> okay. Like, you're I'm not just, going I'm anywhere. just saying I, I had to personally apologize to Daryl Morey via Twitter DM this week for doubting the, the Mike D'Antoni hire. I thought it was a terrible idea. I watched D'Antoni. Are you getting your hopes up, Bill? I watched. I don't, I don't have I, my hopes up. As a good friend, I don't want to see you crush. It's not. That I, oh, I don't have. I'm not like talking about winning a championship this year. I'm. I'm not an idiot. Whatever for the like, next like five years. We're we're the three seed in the West right now. We've won eight in a row. James Harden is a, is 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 a machine. I, we're. I'm. I'm the happiest I've been as a Rockets fan since I was like eight years old. Come June though, it's we're gonna look back and the whole season's gonna be pointless again. It's gonna end up being the Calves and, and the, the Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, but it's, it's gonna be, just let me have this. So moment. predictable. Let me have this moment in the sun. Like people are like, how can you hate the NBA? It's just like it's just fucking the same. I don't know how you, I don't know how you could hate the NBA. I'm NBA one of those people fun. that ask that question. I love the NBA. I love NBA watching fun. my Sixers. I like to see the progress. I like watching your Sixers this year, and I mean they get beat badly a lot still, but they I, we're competitive. Watching uh, we have six wins, and it's crazy. We have this. I think we're we have the same amount of wins as Minnesota right now. Embiid putting the process on the inside of his shoes. Well, that's his nickname right now. Yeah, yeah. He's the process. But it's hysterical to me. Like, he's completely bought in to the to the joke. He's the best. Because it is partially a joke. He's yeah, been, he, oh, he's he's been in the country for like 10 minutes. and He's very good. He's, he, I, I get, enjoy him. he gets it. He gets our, our humor. But shouts to Mike D'Antoni. And uh, that's true. You got to give him credit, Embiid, for, for understanding American humor. Yeah. Because where's he from? I think Cambodia. Good for him. I don't know. So somewhere in Africa. Shouts to Daryl Morey. Shouts to Mike D'Antoni. I apologize Is for Cambodia all the hate. in Africa? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Uh, we've got the Maybe backdoor. Cameroon. The backdoor cover hotline still exists, and but now you can call about anything, any sport. All sports takes and questions are welcome. The number is eight hundred three nine two six three four four. Give us your first name and your school or your city or whatever. Ask us questions or or, or leave a take or. Whatever I don't know. Make noises. Make, put the phone near your toilet while you blow it up, and just leave that for Micah to listen to. Holy shit! Okay, hold on. So I just remembered that um, USF, they're the Bulls, and their hand sign is the same as Texas. Right. And so Charlie Strong there's a picture of him standing at the podium, like USF gear, and he's doing the hook of horns thing. <laughs> that is fucking weird. But they kind of like. Do it like that. They they like circle uh, it. He looks exactly like. I mean that is that is okay. Strange. So you for those who don't know, USF hired Charlie Strong, the Texas for, former Texas yes. head coach, and they have the same hand sign as the hook 'em horns. Yeah, Dylan's exactly. got a picture of him. That is the only bizarre. thing. The only thing different <laughs> is the background, which says USF on it. Yeah. On the back, the backdrop thing. Me- uh, much better football it could, team. That could be Photoshop. The look on his face is like. Fuck, I feel like an idiot right now. <laughs> this is That's insane. Okay, sorry. I had to interrupt with oh, that. Life was, is stranger than fiction. What was the random fact we had that now every coach in the state of Florida, every college has football won a coach national in the state championship of Florida? Either as a head coach, an assistant coach, or a player. That's pretty crazy. People forget that uh, Scott Frost was the quarterback of those Nebraska Cornhusker glory days. No one forgets that. I but forgot that. He was on the cover of Game Day, I think. N- not the glory days. The gl- that was Tommy Frazier. Well, he won a national championship. Okay, but Tommy Frazier... Quarterback, the best college football team of all time. But that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about Scott Frost turning us around. We're gonna get probably eight wins next year, maybe ten, ten the next year, and then he'll end up leaving for Nebraska when Riley gets fired. I, that's what we're all worried about. Yeah, well, I, I can't. I mean, I'm losing sleep over. Speaking it. of quarterbacks, shouts to T.J. Yates. Yeah, that's long right. time listener, guest of the show. You got him a job. All around good guy. Now a Miami Dolphin. Teej. Hashtag fins up. TJ, go, brother. You think you're better than me? Get that money, Teej. You're employed now. You think you're better? Stack that paper, brother. Get a job. You get, dude, fucking okay, greatest TJ. job on earth, dude. It, wh- how many weeks into the season are we? I don't know. 12? No, it's back we're, up we're like 15. It's like we, we, he, go, he, go, he goes and plays a few weeks in Miami and makes a few hundred grand. He fucking. stands on the sideline hoping that whoever's ahead of him doesn't get hurt. Well, who, the problem is that whoever's ahead of him is who are you saying? Matt Moore, is? man. It's Matt, so I don't even know who that is. I've never I heard of Matt pick, Moore. I couldn't pick a, him out of a lineup. He's been like the backup for the Dolphins for like the last 50 years. I've never heard of him. He's no TJ Yates. Matt Moore, what a boring name. So boring I'm, I'm worried because I think TJ ends up having to go no, out TJ's on the field. No, TJ's going to have to play like in three weeks or two which, weeks. Which sucks, but still, dude, 
That's, that doesn't suck. Teej, I believe in you, man. No, no, I'm just saying it, it's like he's been chilling the whole season, counting money. He's been and playing now, golf. Now he's getting <laughs> more money, except he might actually have to go like throw a football at some of these dog shit Dolphins. Yeah, sorry your career got in the way of your golfing, TJ. Dude, Matt Moore's been in the league for 10 years. I don't, and I don't, I've and I've never I've heard his never name. Heard, that that definitely really me. says something. He's like about the most generic white dude ever. He could walk in in here right now, sit down in that empty seat. Like who the who are you? Who the fuck are you, sir? Please and why, leave. And please why do you leave, want to sit here, sir? Please leave. We're calling security. <laughs> <laughs> like no, man, I play football. I'm I'm the Miami Dolphins starting quarterback, and we'd be like, like yeah, yeah, sure you are, buddy. Stats. He has. 33 career touchdowns, 28 inter- to 28 interceptions. That's a decent ratio. Hey, look, ratio. in 2011, he fumbled 14 times. He probably fucks, though. Do you know 13 how and 12. How, how the hell do you <laughs> fumble 14 times Is in one a, season? That's got to be some kind of record. That has to be an error. That has hey, to be a no, statistical no. error. UCF. No, it's Matt Moore, did you fumble holy. 14 times in one year? Remember when UCF's quarterback, uh, Mackenzie Milton, fumbled six times in the same game? TJ, no. <laughs> maybe just walk into the locker room and kindly ask Matt Moore to sit the fuck down and you go start. Because if you fumble 14 times in a season, you should be forced out of the league. TJ, be game ready because Matt Moore is going to fumble his job away to oh you, my. right to you, into your oh hands. Oh my God, 14 fumbles in 2011. Dude, how do you not hang up your cleats after that? And he only played 12 games. <laughs> 14 <laughs> times? Jeez. That's, that's more than once a game. Yeah, yeah, like if I'm the GM, I'm sitting him down at the end of the year, like, look, we gotta let you go, man. You fumbled 14 times this year. Like, either we can't that trust or you. either that, or we literally have to cover your hands in glue <laughs> before every snap. <laughs> we can't trust you to take a snap. Hey, he Fuck. went, he went 500. He was six and six that, that is, year. That, that's what's funny is, yeah, that that year that he had 14 fumbles was also his most passing yards in a year at almost 2,500 well, yards. That's when he started the entire season. I think he hasn't started oh, yeah. a game since he went since Most he fumbled 14 <laughs> times in one season. That's because, like, we just pulled up this sheet of his, of his stats, and, you know, if you're a coach that get, ends up with this guy on your team because your GM fucked you and made him your, your quarterback, you're looking at this, and you're just like, yeah, I can't start this guy. If, if I'm scheming my defense right now to play the Dolphins, I'm like, look, just just go after Matt. He's going to fucking, he's going to fumble. See if you can get your pinky just on the ball. Him. He will fumble it. Just pump fake him as you run by him. He's going to drop the ball. Oh, my God. 14. I, I that's, that more. that's incredible. To be fair, he's only fumbled one time in the last five years. Yeah, but, yes, he's only Micah, p- but he's only taken like 13 snaps. <laughs> that's, that's true, too. <laughs> he's due. He, is not, he's due for he also fun. hasn't started a game in six years. Dude, I'm, I, I got to say, if you're playing, I don't know who, who Miami's playing against this week, but y- you got to start their defense if you've got them on your fantasy team because Matt Moore's fumbling like six or seven times. Yeah, when 2000, uh, what is that, 2013, yeah, like he threw six passes and, one, and he has one fumble. <laughs> no, I guarantee Matt Moore. Matt Moore's going to put a string of games together. <laughs> that season he went. Uh, that's 2013. He went two two completions on six attempts with two interceptions and a fumble. That's that's not the line you're looking. That's for. the worst year you could have. <laughs> no, I'm telling you right he, now. He had to throw a fumble in there just to show off. Matt Moore is going to put a string of games together the next two or three games, where he's going to make he, he's going to have another four or five years down like. Because of it, is there a, as a backup, is he's, there a, a he's gonna play bet? well, not well, but like good enough to be able to prolong his career another five years. Is there a prop bet on my bookie about uh, like a one and a half over under on the fumbles there? How I many mean, fumb- how many Matt how many Moore fumbles? fumbles there will be? So TJ, I mean, just keep your head in the game. Cause hey, yeah, ba- pay attention because you're going in. I don't know what number you they gave you, but they're gonna call your number. Or I mean, TJ could do that too. He could come in, crush it for two, three games, and just. Get another contract for another three years. That's what That's TJ what we're does. Hoping, man. Yeah. That's what TJ does. That's what he does best. Houston Texans playoff game winning quarterback TJ Yates. Do we have any more shouts? Shouts to uh, no, <laughs> no. I don't like no. anybody. Shouts to no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have any more. No, no. Let's get out of here. Shouts to the Gildan Bull. That's all. That's all. Subscribe on iTunes, rate, leave us a review, all that good stuff. Uh, that's important. I want to make that clear. It's important that you do those things. That you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Unless you're a UTSA fan. Unless you're a roadrunner, in which case it's still important, but just unsubscribe, leave us a one star and a bad review, and go fuck yourself. Uh, <laughs> check out our other podcasts in the Grand X Media <laughs> Network. Follow us on Twitter, at Backdoor Cover. I think producer Mike is putting together some type of bowl pick'em contest situation. Is that correct? 
Yes. He, yeah. Get in there so fast. Games are coming up. We're going to tweet it out. You better follow us. You better. On Twitter, at Backdoor Cover. Also, we've got an Instagram account, at TFM Tailgate, that nobody's fucking sending anything to anymore, so just it's just sitting there. Well, not many tailgates going on right now. No. In all fairness, I don't care if the tailgate is from 2012. If it's a cool picture or video, fucking send it to me, and I'll That's put fair. it up. I'm That's bored. Uh, hit mybookie.ag. Place a wager or two. Use the code Backdoor. This isn't even on here. They might not even pay for this. I'm just fucking saying it at this point. We're just a program. Just giving away free promos. Just giving away free promos. Mybookie.ag. Use the code backdoor. Get a bonus. I just remembered that I have the uh, the Bills defense in my fantasy league, and they play the Dolphins next week. I'm in the championship. Oh no! Shouts sitting pretty. Shouts to Matt Moore and and uh, Fumbleitis. Or conflict of interest, and TJ gets in, and then you what do you do? You just root for your own self to lose because you can't go That's against. True. I can't go against our boy Pete. Nope. Can't be done. All right, we're out of here. Peace. Peace.